You are now listening to Lady Denim. Kick back and enjoy the ride. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. This is your host, Lady Adenum, and today's topic we're going to be talking about the sensual allure of woman. Being a woman is demanding and at times exhausting. It's as if existing is a God-forbidden sin, and we are constantly bound to shame for any utterance or notion of what makes us a woman. We are questioned relentlessly. Our femininity and intelligence challenged by perverse, insecure, covetous men, and quizzling masculino women who think being one of the guys will deliver her from the rise of the feeble, treacherous male and his flawed denigrations, hailed from his fears of non-existent manhood. From birth, some of us are rejected and labeled difficult, a headache, all because our ignoble fathers know we are their karma for choosing to defile women. Our mothers cry, knowing the pain and suffering we will go through, for she has witnessed it firsthand, but failed to break the shackles of the broken cycle. She too despises us in some form, especially if we bear the resemblance of he who has broken her spirit. If a woman were fortunate to be born into the arms of doting parents, she is envied for having the unconditional love and hassle-free life most weren't blessed with. She becomes a target for the weak and wretched looking to sabotage her, to prove she is unworthy of what was bestowed upon her. Being a woman, we are told it is our fault that unspeakable events happen to us. We are supposed to accept inferiority and provoking mistreatment for our shapely bodies and garments that adorn our flesh. Even if we dress like nuns diverting our eyes to the ground, we are expected to be subservient but work our fingers to the bone twice as hard as a man, yet be devoted mothers and unconditionally loving wives with extreme carnal desires, a slutty sexy nympho yet a shy, untouched virgin. Why is it so complex to be a woman? Well, ladies and gentlemen, let us dive into the differences between sensuality and sexuality. What is sensuality? Sensuality is the condition of being pleasing or fulfilling to the senses, arousing the physical sense of touch, sight, hearing, smell, taste, and mind. Sexuality, on the other hand, is about sexual feelings, thoughts, attractions, and behaviors towards other people. If anything, darling, sensuality is a state of being, and sexuality is the prime desire to act. The feminine ooze is in sensuality, but in feeble-minded men and masculine women, shame its flair in the art of seduction and beauty. So they objectify and encourage the mistreatment of feminine women to feel secure. However, this whiny, confused, pusillanimous society of today wasn't attacking the divine feminine 102 years ago. The Roaring Twenties was a time where both men and women had extra money to spend and were comfortable in their masculine and feminine, coexisting while respecting each other's strengths despite women still being viewed as lesser than a man. Due to the 19th Amendment, women became more bold and rebellious within their feminine, especially through fashion, their playful, vivacious nature, and enticing damsel sensuality. 
Examples of famous actresses such as Clara Bow, Josephine Baker, and Anna Mae Wong were the epitome of desirability and played their roles flawlessly with feminine elegance. In some ways, the women during the glamour era were smarter than the feminists of today. They skillfully used their femininity to influence and affect change. Something the masculine couldn't negate and get enough of despite the tug and pull of weak men prattling on about run-down ideologies of misogyny. Real masculine men were not threatened by the social changes and in fact embraced them. Darling, women after all weren't trying to be necessarily equal to men, just regarded as human and not brain-dead baby-making factories. Gentlemen back then would impose upon undisciplined, boorish morons who would harass or degrade women for just existing. Gentlemen not only sought to be upstanding men, they also saw women as a delicate work of art to be admired. They understood the convivial act of courtship as well as romanticism, yearning to explore the art of sexuality with their sensual muse, their source of inspiration to chase and earn her affections. Ladies and gentlemen, the Roaring Twenties has shown to be progressively positive while being a turning point in history with a tinge of what the sensual allure of woman can influence, balancing with the masculine like the yin and the yang. It is not to be feared or thought of as weak, and women shouldn't be abashed or punished for having embodied such a gift. The consequences of suppressing the beauty, strength, and nature of women to satisfy insecure egos of entitled errant cowards can be detrimental. Now let's take a peek into the Middle East. Before February 1979, Iranian women during the Bedlevi era had made some progress in gaining human rights, despite pushback from the cleric. Women were able to vote. They were educated, they were able to stand for public office, entering the workforce, granted equal rights in marriage and divorce, and so on. Even abortion was made legal without arousing much public attention, which is still a taboo or controversial topic in modern society. Femininity was not feared, and women were able to embrace their own sensuality in essence, like the most beautiful reverse tulips gracing barren lands with beauty and vitality. Unfortunately, all the hard work and achievements women gained to be acknowledged was reversed by the Iranian Revolution. After the Iranian Revolution to overthrow the Shah and Western ideologies, the Islamic Republic was born, a form of government that is a Republican extremist wet dream. Now some Iranians have claimed the rule of Balevi was a dictatorship, others claim the regime of the Islam Republic is far worse. Ladies and gentlemen, I will leave links in the description so you can formulate your own opinion on this matter, but I digress. The power of the feminine was repressed, and basic human rights were stripped from women to the point they are arrested or killed at times for not abiding by the strict dress code. A woman needs her husband's permission to work outside the home or leave the country let alone receive an education. There are unequal value for women's testimony compared to that of a man, and traditional attitudes towards women's behavior and clothing as a way of provoking sexual assault and rape have made conviction for rape of women and girls difficult, if not impossible, in Iran. Domestic violence is not illegal, leaving women vulnerable to violence and death at the hands of their spouse. Darling, it is abundantly clear to me that there is no true masculinity, only itty bitty tender skinned violent angry little men who use religion as a way to control and oppress the divine feminine because they have zero discipline over their sexual urges. 
In Iran, there is resentment and hatred in the wounded masculine towards the sensuality of woman. And the consequence is never being at peace, destined to relive the sufferings and afflictions until balance is restored. So, why is it so complex being a woman? Because in essence, we are seraphic, soul-stirring, impassioned creatures that walk the earth with our voluptuous hips swinging side to side like ripples in the sand in desert storms. Walking with our heads held high like Hyperion trees. When we are stricken with sorrow or indignation, we shake up the soil beneath our feet and cause the earth to shift. But when the pain and grief subsides, we cleanse ourselves within the arms of our femininity. Like the vast oceans washing through the lands to create anew. And heal like the axolotl buried in mud by the riverbank. Our sensual nature calls forth the masculine making him melt, but we make him stronger to defend our honor. Yet we also have contributed to the weak who resent us, and we continue to allow it by spending hours in agony birthing their children, who more than likely will fall victim to the cycle we didn't put an end to. We are complex creatures because we hold so much power yet refuse to use our full potential. Woman holds the key to life because we breathe life into everything that surrounds us, even the most evil demonic beings. And that is the intricate reality of the sensual allure of woman. Thank you for listening. You can follow me on Insta at the Lady of Denim Podcast underscore. You can follow my Twitter and main Insta at a denim um. Be sure to follow and like the Lady of Denim Podcast on Facebook. Mwah. Until next time, darling.